It's been slow going on the robot, mainly because the sanding and putting stage has uh, just taken a lot of time because I have to keep going back and forth between sanding and putting up and sanding it down and putting it up more as I find little gaps here and there. Uh, mostly done. In fact, I did start the paint process. However, I'm going to go back and redo this. The reason for that is, well, the paint currently on this is Tester's Metalizer Aluminum. They recommend flat aluminum in the instructions. However, A, my store didn't have flat aluminum, and B, uh, this I think itself is a pretty good match. Considering I was planning on doing a flat varnish over it uh, at the end, and I picked this not because it's a good metallic, but because it's a bad metallic. On the show, it's clearly not a metal robot. Clearly, it's painted with Krylon or whatever, what have you. So, uh, I never had good results with the metalizer. So that's I picked it because it's not a good metallic. It's not all clad or something like that. Um, however, I'm decided not to use this mainly because throughout the painting process here, going back and forth and dealing with this stuff, it's very thin, and there are a few more gaps here and spots I miss than. I've already used up half the bottle and it's lacquer and it stinks and all that. I had to try, decided to try some uh, Vallejo Air Model Chrome just to see how that would look. And I sprayed that over the testers parts and one of these, either this half or this half, is painted with the chrome and the other one is with the metalizer and I can't tell the difference. So it's the exact same look I'm getting with the stinky, lacquer, very thin testers paint that I am getting with this very easy to clean up, uh, covers better Vallejo Model Air Chrome. So we're going to go with this. Uh, I do have to sand this down a bit. I'm trying to wash off as much as the testers that I can because even though this is non-buffing, this is a metalizer paint and it comes right off on your fingers and so I don't want this underneath the paint. So I'm going to do a light sanding of this down, uh, maybe a gentle bath in the purple power. And there are a few spots like here that I still have to clean up. I did some last minute putty work and I thought I could just spray over it and that was a mistake. So I need to sand that down a bit more. But we're going to wash all this off, get uh, a good primer coat of Vallejo primer on it, which is thick and will hopefully fill in any of those tiny little burrs and then we'll start again with the chrome and once I get this done we can start on the fun parts all the electronics last thing his little pants now I was having problems filling in the seam lines here uh, I use the plastic putty worked a lot better once I put a coat of primer on here so the plastic putty would stick however um, if you're following along at home I would just ignore these because trying to fill them in, I did more damage than good. Uh, they're fairly small and inconclusive, or you can't see them when you're done, only slightly. And you can always just say it's a seam line, kind of like the one down the center here. So leaving them alone is not a big issue. Uh, I got to reference the show, but I think these are going to be painted some German gray, but I have to double check that. I do know in the third season they had a slight metallic sheen to them. But with all the metal on this, I want to go with a flat color. So we'll, get, we'll do season two. The good news, we got the Vallejo Chrome painted on uh, most of the robots. Came out pretty well. Uh, started trying to paint in the darker areas with some, oh, what is this called, gun gray. But I'm going to go back and actually airbrush these in. And it's going to be easier just to airbrush them and then tape off the gun gray areas and then uh, repaint the chrome. Um, a lot easier doing it that way instead of trying to tape around. So there's that. We got the, the German gray on the pants. Unfortunately, paint just does not stick to this uh, PVC plastic crap. So I was doing some test fitting and I already scratched it all off. I did not dull coat this. I'm not sure if that would help because it did go all the way through to the primer, past the primer, so the primer's not sticking well. I may just have to do some touch-up work after it's all built and complete. But there's that. 
little snafu on the mouth. I'll talk about that later because I'm waiting for parts, but let's talk about the brain. I decided to start on the brain. So the brain, let me get the instructions for you here. Ow. So the brain has seven of these little rods here that light up. And in the first season, they actually all moved up and down. That That's not happening. But my original plan was to light these to light these up was to put uh, since they're clear plastic here's the center section here I thought about putting a bulb in the center and then the light would carry through to the tip here but first of all it wouldn't light it very well and secondly there's a lack of space putting a bulb there would take up a lot of room and I have wires that I need to run from the the main top of the brain down through here so uh, ditch that and instead I am making my own little eye stocks this is 1 16th brass rod and cut a bunch of it up using my tube cutter and I also the details not to be the exact same as on this one but I cut some I think this is 3 16th this is um, aluminum uh, I said rod earlier I'm sorry tube and this is aluminum tube as well and this is brass, this is aluminum. There's no reason for using two different kinds. It's just this is all I had in uh, this size. And I have to do some cleanup work here because using the tube cutter does crimp them a bit, but this is going to slide over. I had one already cleaned up. Let me see if I can make a quick search for it. And of course, I won't find it when I need it. Oh, wait, there we go. So I just have to clean up the burrs and that's going to go on the end. And then I will give you the exact size here. We're going to take some, this is 0.75 millimeter fiber optic and we're going to run it through. I cannot clean this up. Well, this is going to run through, there we go. Run through here. I'll stick it out a bit. Okay, I gotta clean out the inside of these too. It's they're not all perfectly clear. There's some burrs, but anyway, we'll stick out the fiber optic. I will drill some holes in here, and then to light it, we'll have the lights in the main body. So um, a lot of tedious work right now, but it should look pretty good once it's all done. On to the robot's mouth and had a plan for the mouth and of course it didn't work because I didn't check the instructions closely enough or I didn't dry fit the pieces. This is the clear part that goes over the mouth that flashes red whenever he talks. Uh, on the original robot it was actually made of neon, real neon. And um, so this goes on to here and this is one very poorly designed area of the kit because if you want to light it there's absolutely no space to put the lighting so uh, what I'm going to do is originally I was going to just cut a box out I already marked it out I was just going to cut up all this out here and put a box behind it so I can put the lights in however there's no real point of saving the outside here because that's not going to be seen but you do need oops, the lip here and then this top area to attach to the upper and lower portions because they will be seen so instead I'm just gonna cut off this whole section entirely and then build a box underneath and then we'll go over how we're doing the lights there. Had a very productive day with the robot today and uh, got a lot of done and a lot to show you. Uh, sorry if there's noise in the background but the humidity is horrible right now and it's hot and we got fans going everywhere. But uh, we have the main hull, the torso of the robot pretty well assembled here. Got my very expensive lighting panel in place. And so I had to cut this portion off of the original uh, piece, cut it in half, and then put this on. And I colored in all the clear plastic with Tamiya clear paints. And we can light it up. First I covered with clear paints, but there were still some pieces showing through because they didn't do a good job of casting the plastic and there's bubbles in it. And so then I had to take it out and I sanded it down and I sprayed it with some dull coat to hopefully uh, even it out and it's still not that great. And I just noticed I got a fingerprint in there. I should have waited before handling it so I'll have to clean that up. 
But I also frosted these with uh, some Tester's uh, dull coat to because they're supposed to be white. So that softened those colors up. So we have that done. Got the mouthpiece in place. Ended up cutting out everything. Basically, I just have the top of the original plate there and then the bottom, which is this piece right here. And uh, by the way, this piece is actually, it is tubing just like the neon on the original robots. Uh, there are spaces in between, which again makes it a little difficult to light. And what I actually have is I made this disgusting looking thing, which is going to be my light box. This is just a clear piece of styrene. Again, I uh, flat varnished it with Tester's Dull Coat, which helps to spread the light out and just use some scrap styrene and it looks quite horrible, but it's going to function. And I got, I'm going to cover this with some fabric tape, some gaffer's tape to cover in all the holes and then slide it into place. The light for the mouth is a two inch section of LED tape, waterproof. So it has this protective plastic coating on it, which helps to spread the light out even more. Originally, I was going to stuff this with some polyfilla, but I don't think I need it because this is going to be enough and it's going to be a little bit away from the mouth and it's, it spreads out very nicely. Now, the other issue is, well, you know what? Let me wire this up real quick and I'll be right back. Okay. I got this barely holding together right now. I can't solder until I get into the robots. Hopefully I can do this in one shot and nothing falls apart. Anyway, I have the mouthpiece here that's supposed to flash red every time the sound goes through or whenever he talks. I have my sound card here. Uh, now you can take an LED and attach it right to the speaker wires and uh, so whenever power goes through to the speaker, whenever it talks, the LED would light up. That's fine. Uh, two, if you put two LEDs, it barely lights up. Any more, it won't light up because there's just not enough power for, from these little pill batteries, not enough voltage. So rummaged around on the internet and I found a solution. I can pick this up without loosening any wires. This little thing right here, this is a TIP31 transistor. And I have no idea what magic it does, but what it does, what it allows me to do is to add an additional power supply to this whole rig. So now I have enough power to run this little strip of LED tape. And a cool little thing, costs you about 20 cents, or if you want it in a hurry and you go to Radio Shack, it costs you $3 like it did me. So isn't that wonderful? But right now, we take our little speaker here, press a button. It's got a lot of hot spots right now, but once I already tested it in here, once it goes through this clear plastic, it did smooth out a bit. Also, it's going to be a little bit of a distance away from it, so it's going to be fine there. And um, do 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 do. Let's try another one here. Now I did have to change the sounds I have on the sound card here because the original one had uh, the mechanical noises when he spoke and unfortunately that was causing the mouth to turn on and off when it shouldn't. So I had to go and scrounge up for some different ones. There's no way to do that um, unless I get a second sound card and I didn't want to go through that. Uh, that pain but so we have the mouth ready to go again just tape this off and I'm gonna insert it and that this is probably gonna go in the pants but that is done let's move on to part three and here are my little light eye stocks whatever they call them I forget in the instructions but have my brass rod as I showed you before I got the fiber optic running through down to the center uh, had to do this twice, unfortunately, because um, I know you can't use super glue near fiber optic, but uh, you can't also use plastic cement, which I found out. And I got some leaking into the fiber optic, and because it's such a sharp bend of where I had to put it in, it started snapping, and so I had to rip this apart. And it's a little, a little nasty, but you're not going to be able to see it once it's all inside. But uh, I had to redo it and pull these out a little bit further, and so the fiber optic wasn't bending at a 90 degree angle it's a little bit more of a smoother curve and then I burned the ends to 
get a little fisheye effect with them. I can't really show you how to light them up at the moment because that's not hooked up. However, I want to show you, well, I'm going to show you how I'm going to light them up or what I'm going to use, I should say. This here, these are flashing LEDs. Normally, if you want to flash something on a robot, it costs flashing lights, you need a 555 timer chip, and that's really beyond my expertise. Uh, so I came up with a more of a redneck version of how to do flashing lights, which will really work if you're new to electronics and lighting and you want something really simple. So we have, let me pull one out here. I got ones that are pre-wired. I also have a few that are not pre-wired. I don't know why I got the pre-wired ones, but where did I do my battery? There it goes. So it's fairly new technology, flashing LEDs. Before you would have to get the timer chip for them, but now you can just buy an LED that flashes on its own. So plain and simple. However, I have I want multiple flashing LEDs, and I want them flashing at different rates. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. By controlling the amount of power going to the LED, you can change how fast it flashes. And so, just to get an idea here, I added a extra resistor onto this LED. So this one's doubled up now. I don't know the exact ohms that the resistors are here. I still have to play around with, the, play around with them and find out what exactly what I want. But this is a good demonstration here. I have one that's out of the box, essentially. I have this one that I added another resistor to. And if we put these to power, need a third hand here. As you can see, they flash at different rates. Again, this is a little redneck ghetto way of getting flashing lights. You cannot get them in the exact timing that you want, but uh, I'm totally okay with this being in the head and also on the eye stocks. So example for the eye stocks, we're gonna have two of these, four lights going to one of them and three to the other. And so then they blink alternatively, not in an exact pattern, but it will be good enough. I do have to play around with the resistors to find out exactly, because this is a bit fast. So I'm definitely gonna have to add more resistors to each one and determine exactly how slow I wanna get it. But this is gonna go for the eye stocks, except for it's gonna be yellow. And then I'll go ahead and show you the hard part. The brain area on top. I can figure out how this goes together. One part I haven't started on yet. So you have little hieroglyphics that go something like that. And also there's flashing lights in here that flash in uh, somewhat random patterns as well. A uh, very difficult area to get lighting in. And current plan is if I could find it, and I wasn't planning on showing you this part so I don't have it lying around. Oh, maybe there you are. Okay, I got some three millimeter LEDs and even those are too big to fit in here. So I basically, I sanded this down and chopped it down as much as I possibly can uh, to the point where I hope, hope it still works. But these are gonna go inside the brain area here, just two of them, and hopefully that's gonna light up this area. We'll get into a bit more detail on that in the next video, hopefully, but we're gonna have flashing LEDs all over the place only issue is the more stuff I put in here the more I have to run down through this part here and hopefully not destroy any of the stuff I already have so a lot of holes to be drilled through a lot of solid parts especially the clear plastic which is not that easy to drill so hopefully nothing cracks but that's where we stand right now pretty good progress for a day and I need to do something else because it's hot